Again, John, uh, thank you for your lecture yesterday. Uh, we just talked briefly about holiness and community. Let's change gears a little bit. Another important uh, aspect to your lecture was uh, the relationship in the Testaments. Uh, in a brief conversation between lecture and now, you provocatively spoke about uh, the God under my bed uh, <laughs> as a sort of New Testament only way of perceiving God. So let's just spend a little bit of time, Jay, you were also mentioning uh, the importance of a whole Bible theology and the neglect of the Old Testament so frequently in the church. So let's just spend a little bit of time talking about um, not necessarily holiness uh, per se, but just understanding um, the relationship of the Testaments and its, its bearing on a uh, proper understanding of the Christian life, which obviously has significant holiness implications. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and start by making your point about the God under my bed. And well, as, as I said in the lecture, it seems to me that a lot of the demise of a Christian understanding of the necessity of ethical holiness, of living out the life of God, is a result of our ignorance of the Old Testament. Uh, because the New Testament assumes the Old Testament. Uh, oftentimes people will say to me, well, there's the Christian Bible, that's the New Testament, and the Jewish Bible, that's the Old Testament. Well, we're Christians. So, yeah, yeah, you, you, you sort of need the Old Testament just for sort of background to know where the New Testament came from, but, but you don't really need it. And uh, that is, <laughs> to put it bluntly, non-Christian. <laughs> the Christian church for 2,000 years has said, no, the whole Bible is Christian. A proper understanding of the Old Testament is that it is preparatory to Christ. And in the same way, the New Testament assumes that we know the Old Testament, that the Old Testament, as I said in the lecture, what's the question of life? How can a sinful human being ever share the character of a holy God? If you don't know the Old Testament, you don't know that. Well, the Old Testament is laying these foundations. God is transcendent. He's absolutely other. God is holy. He is beyond anything we can imagine in his essence and his character. He is just. This is a cause and effect world. He is majestic. He is glorious. Salvation is to be found in community. Salva righteousness is to be lived out in society. Revelation comes through historical narrative. Hammering those points home. Now the other points are there. His imminence, his love, his grace, the reality of an individual relationship with God, the reality of personal righteousness, revelation through teaching. They're there, but they're minor points. The, old, the New Testament just reverses that order. The New Testament says, okay, you got the point now. God is transcendent. Let us talk about his imminence. Let us talk about God having come near. You understand about his absolute holiness. Now let us talk about his love and so forth. Down that list, just reversing them. If you know your Old Testament, then it fits together. Then it is wonderful good news that the awesome, holy God, who, as I've said, could fry you alive by looking at you, loves you. But if you don't know the Old Testament, then what you've got is a friendly little God who says, oh, honey, that's all right. It doesn't really matter. It's okay. A little God who exists, as I said, under my bed to answer my prayers and make all my throws come up double sixes. A religion that is purely individualistic about me and my righteousness, and interestingly, a religion that's primarily through teaching, so that actually, whether this stuff happened or not, really, mm, it's not that important. 
In other words, all too much of what modern evangelicalism looks like. So a New Testament without an Old Testament borders on, if not falls into, heresy. Exactly. Idolatry. Exactly. It's, it's always teetering on the edge uh, because it's half the truth. And the devil is very good at half-truths. I think Miroslav Wolf described it as a Santa Claus God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I've heard uh, Old Testament scholars joke about the little bit that's stuck onto the end of the Bible, you know, the <laughs> New Testament. Um, and I think, there's, I think there are ways that we can, you know, help to, to kind of reconnect or, or at least revision the integrity and the wholeness Yes. Of that, um, yes. By, by reintroducing people to the, the great narrative of, of the, the scripture that's overarching. I mean, we, we do a formation series that's called One Bible, One Story uh, in our great. Own congregation to, great. To, to help people see this, not only the connections, but just the, the, the overall integrity, but also uh, encourage more preaching in uh, the, the uh, passages of the Old Testament. Uh, encourage people to engage with it um, in perhaps new ways and, and interesting and, 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 and creative ways. So I, I, th I think making that, that connection and helping people to do that in, in, the con in, in our church settings is, is really important. Yes, yes, um, yes. In your many years of pastoral ministry, what, what, are, what would you say common perceptions or misperceptions of the Old Testament are? Well, you know, it, 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 we don't understand it. Why would God do that sort of a thing? That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, begat, begat, begat. Uh, you know, just go, go on through it. That, that, that it seems very far removed uh, from our situation. The interesting thing is, though, we now, we, we live in a world that's very far removed from the Greek situation as well. True. In fact, maybe even approaching something a little more close to a, a Hebrew th way of thinking than a Greek way of thinking. I mean, there may be some new opportunities really even culturally with that. But I think it's those kinds of things. It's, it's longer. Uh, God seems uh, frightening. Angry. In, in, in some places in, in that. And uh, I think that's, that has built in, the, that's part of what's built in the distance. Yes. Also the thinking that, well, we, we've moved on. Um, you know, Jesus fulfills that law. So it's very important for us to just, let's look forward rather than, you know, we don't need to, to go back. That's sort of closed. You know, Jesus closed yeah. the door on that. Yeah. And, yeah. and we, can, we can move forward. I think these are the things that uh, over time have separated people yeah. from yes. the, the, the text of, of the Old Testament, from, from its rich uh, yeah. Yeah. narrative, uh, through its imagery, its, you know, wonderful uh, stories of, of characters. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's full of characters. Yes. Um, and, and, it's, and so rich for the for the church now, yeah. and for our ethical life, oh, and for yes. our life of, yes. of holiness. Yes. But these are, I think, these are the things that have kind of played yeah. into that. And the whole idea, well, hey, we're people of the new covenant. That that was an old covenant for some other time. We're we're new covenant, and uh, uh, this was the point I was trying to make with regard to Jeremiah thirty-one. The only difference between the covenants is location out there, me trying to do it, versus in here by the Holy Spirit being enabled to do it. And uh, so I think, I think that's, that's vitally important. Uh, but there, there's no question, people say to me, I don't understand the Old Testament, and I say, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Especially because the Old Testament is so rooted in time and place, and if you don't understand that time and place, it's like picking up a letter on the street. You don't know who wrote it. You don't know what their situation was. Chances are that thing's going to mean very little to you. And so I do think, you know, this is one of the, the losses that we have to deal with. Uh, uh, Sunday school today no longer deals with the basic facts of the Old Testament. <laughs> it doesn't, in so many cases, the children do not get that perspective, they do not get that basis, and uh, and thus have no ground for understanding. So, so that's a. I I really do think that in our church education, we've got to find ways to reconnect people with the story. Mm -hmm. 
to to say, you know, a lot of people are uh, into genealogy these days. Well, you want to know your genealogy? Here it is in these 39 books. I think another thing that we have to do is to, to constantly say, help people to understand that God's rage, especially in the prophets, is the flip side of his love. That it is, you know, we've lost the good word in English, zeal, because as you guys know, it, that's one word in, in Hebrew. Zealous and jealous are the same word, kana. And unfortunately in English, jealousy is now a petty emotion. My wife smiles at another man and I get all bent out of shape because I'm jealous. But jealous and zealous go together. And I think of Jesus cleaning out the temple. <laughs> and what did the disciples remember? The zeal of thy house has eaten me up. That, that God is so furious because he loves his people so much and, and is so broken over what they are doing to themselves and to their world. So that I, I love to say to students and to others, you know, the most frequently quoted two-verse passage of the Old Testament in the Old Testament it's Exodus 34, 6 and 7. The Lord, the Lord, gracious and compassionate, full of steadfast love, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love to thousands, forgiving transgression and sin and iniquity. That thing gets quoted explicitly six times and it's alluded to another 11. So you say to the Hebrew, what's your God like? Oh, he's gracious and compassionate, mm. slow to anger. Huh? <laughs> Looks to me like he got angry a lot. And they say, well, of course he should have. <laughs> That's not surprising. What's surprising is his hesed. Mm. And I, I, I just think we have to keep hammering on that and helping people to understand. You can't have his love without his rage. He is a fully mm. impassioned person. So let me, you both have said, I'll say it crudely, what seems like contradictory statements. And I don't think you're wrong in doing so, but I just want to clarify. Because yeah. you both said, well, we just need to teach the narrative of the Bible and then the problem will resolve. But on the other hand, you both said that the world of the Old Testament is so different, it's hard for people to read. So how do those two work together? Well, if we just read the Old Testament, does, do we resolve the issue? Um, are there, what are the real issues? What is that difference that makes the Old Testament so difficult? How does teaching, preaching the narrative of Scripture help to clarify some of the apparent uh, antony? antony? Uh, I think you were, um, John, already starting to suggest that with the wrath, um, mercy distinction. But well, I, I think you, reading alone is not all the answer. I think teaching no. yes. and yes. Um, Helping to come, helping something to come alive yes, is yes, important. Because yes. I, I would argue that we have a lot of distance from the New Testament as well. It's just that it's often preached and taught in a way that's been brought into our context and sort of reframed and sometimes kind of not appropriate, not not in, <laughs> not in truthful ways, right? Uh, so we so, might not even have the New Testament, <laughs> right? So we've done we've 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 we've, we've, we've done. I mean, for for one thing, we've we've we kind of. I mean, what do we do? We've we've and we should. We, we're, we're disciples of Jesus, so we focus on the, the fig, on the life of Jesus, on the figure of Jesus. It's kind of a moral teacher, ethical teacher. Yeah. Right? But to know Jesus as Messiah, all of a sudden then that opens yes. up, okay, yes. what's the front end of that? Well, that's yes. huge. That mm. understanding Jesus Messiah and Jesus kingdom, and not just as a salvation script for yeah. my own, my, yeah. my personal legal need of, of you know, forgiveness before God. Um, so I think there are ways as we, you know, read it, but to also to, to teach it and, and explain it and let people bring their questions to it. Yes. Um, yes. That can help. So I, th what sounded contradictory, um, I think wasn't, at least in my mind, wasn't really, it was saying, no, it's both, it's, it's both and, it's read it, it's teach it. Yes. Um, and, and, and that'll shape how we view the, the New Testament totally. Yes. Oh, yes. Really. Yes. And yes. of course, yes. we know there are current 
debates yeah. <laughs> in, in Pauline studies, especially over this whole relationship, and, and, and uh, I'm certainly not going there today, but, I, but it shows how important it is. Yes, it certainly shows how important yes, it is, this yes, discussion yes, is. Yes, yes. So yes. What, what is he thinking about when he uses this Old Testament term justification? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, I think that's what you said earlier, Jeffrey, is, is correct. That, and, and, and as you plugged in, Jay, we think we understand the context of the New Testament a lot better than we actually do. It, it just it appears to be transparent, but it's not. We're kind of modern day Marcionites. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I, I think I, I think what Jay is saying is right that people have to be taught the historic context, the cultural context. You're, you're not going to just pick those up from reading. And, and uh, that, again, is, relates to the whole teaching task of the church and, uh, and helping people to, to understand their own documents that determine who they are. Mm -hmm. So you are both then making, a, I think, a fairly strong plug, would it be fair to say, for something like biblical theology is an important part of uh, church education in terms yeah, of understanding and, and what a messiah is and who he was and his relationship to david and um. yeah absolutely and i i want to probably be careful not to call it that because that would immediately scare off you know quite quite a few people <laughs> use the word theology is like oh, oh no. man run for the hills but <laughs> I, I i i think that is important to see um that in its sort of fully orbed full uh, panorama, the beauty of that, not to, not to neglect specific things in it, but to, but to uh, engender a desire and love for the, for the grand scheme, the yes. grand story. Yes. Um, I think that'll, that pulls us back in, yes. I think, yes. can yes. begin to do that. Yes, yes. I, I, a pastor of my acquaintance designed a curriculum that for children, youth, and adults where if they go through it from child to youth to adult, they will have gone through the biblical story three times mm -hmm. and, and very uh, intently arranged around key incidents. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have always admired that as, as a very intentional way of, of getting at this thing. and. Uh, and again, this is, this is part of my goal, is, is indeed to emphasize the coherency of the Bible in terms of what it's saying. That so, so the holy life is not some peace over here for super-Christians. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's what God's intention for us is. And uh, in the same way, um, salvation salvation understood all the way through. Uh, so, yes, I, I think absolutely we, we desperately need to regain some sense of the wholeness of biblical teaching. And, uh, you know, I would, I, would, I would use oftentimes biblical teaching versus biblical theology <laughs> for the very reason that Jay uh, mentioned, that it scares people to death. But uh, uh, I, think, I think that is is so vital in building robust faith that, that can stand, because that's what we're going to face. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I say to my students, uh, I, I won't see it, but you may very well see the day when it's costly and painful to be a Christian in America. And uh, we better have people ready who know what they believe and why and are willing to be marked. Mm -hmm. Today we have this this <sighs> Pollyanna situation where we can be Christian and sort of merge into the population and uh, not be noticed. Uh, that day is coming to an end, mm -hmm. as it has come to an end in much of the rest of the world. I think a uh, probably fitting conclusion is we emphasize the whole Bible. Uh, relates very much to your uh, lecture on the character of God. And if, if um, 
holiness is an emulation of the character of God. We would seem to need the whole God um, to emulate that God properly, and the whole God has revealed himself in the whole narrative, and so it seems appropriate to know him and to relate to him and one another's according to his ways that we would need the whole Bible. So again, John, Jay, thank you uh, for being with us. Thank you. Uh, blessings in your ministry. Thank you for the privilege.